Amen, family. Ohana, how are we today? You know, I actually uh, need to grab something real quick. Usually uh, I preach from uh, the iPad, but I wanted to give the paper a try. The, the good old fashioned paper cut action right here. There's something, there's something special about preaching from the, the paper Bible as well, you know? You know, you just feel like you get something a little bit more out of it. You can write on it. Maybe you'll get a paper cut one day, like I always say I might one day. But, uh, but it's so great to be able to worship God in person as well, amen? Everything's just better in person. And, uh, and today, uh, I'm really excited to be, able to, to be able to preach about my favorite person, and that is uh, Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, let us pray uh, to our God and Savior. Uh, thank you, Lord. We're so grateful to, to just be your servants, God. To even know you, to, to see you in your life, and how you lived, and how you operated in, in ministry, and how you treated people. And ultimately, God, what did your life look like towards the Father in heaven in you? And I pray, God, that we can use those examples as a, as a focal point in our lives to understand what it means to cry out to you, God, to ask things for you, God, to, to say how amazing you are and all the great things that you've provided in our lives. And I pray, God, that uh, I can just continue to grow in what it means to speak to you and uh, to speak to your people as well. And we're grateful to be amongst uh, all the believers here today and uh, to love you through our worship to you. We thank you. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, uh, I do have a, a little extra announcement for you guys. Uh, tonight at 5.30, we're going to have anybody that would like to come over for some, uh, some fellowship and some food and some games to celebrate our sister Kiera for her fifth birthday at 5.30. And, uh, and uh, we're going to have some games and uh, we're going to have some Chipotle chicken. So if you guys want to join us, you're more than welcome. If you want to bring a side, you're welcome to bring that as well. So, um, so grateful for, for all those who, uh, who were able to step up today and just uh, share. Uh, thank you, Robbie, for sharing for contribution. Uh, he, has, he always has that back, back pocket contribution ready to share his, uh, his convictions and great things that he found. And uh, thank you so much for Mahe uh, sharing for communion. Uh, just, just last night she got news, and then God's like, I want to put her through a little pain before she shares for communion today. And when you were sharing that story, I'm like, she's like, today. I'm like, oh, she probably didn't mean today. And she's like, this morning, 4 a.m. I'm like, oh, okay. She's like, eh, she went to the hospital, guys. And then now she's here worshiping God and sharing, sharing her communion. It, it really shows uh, your, your conviction and uh, willing to, to suffer and, and still pursue your relationship with God and worship with us today. So thank you so much for that. But uh, we're all in a, in a journey together, are we not? And, and this journey that we're experiencing is, is teaching us how to be more like Jesus. And the fact is that we don't know how to live this life. But Jesus has set the example for us to follow. The example that we all need to look at every single day. And we don't just have a God who tells us what to do. We have a God who came to this earth and to show us how we live this life. And he held our hands. It's nice to get our hand held sometimes. And better yet, our destination is heaven, where we are led. And so, you know, just uh, in my life, I've been so convicted on seeing in the scriptures through the gospels the power that Jesus received through his example in his prayer life. And so I admire how resilient he was through his overcoming adversity and still going to God in prayer when he didn't, maybe didn't feel like it. And he went to God in order to get resolved in whatever is happening in his life personally. And we, we just see how connected he is uh, to his people and how connected he is to God. And we even see that he's willing to really cry out to God with tears, with anguish, right? In the same way that, that God's people and people all around the world are crying out to God. Yeah. And, and sometimes crying out to God is the perfect medicine to the heart, is it not? Yeah. And in the story we're going to look at today, we're going to see that Jesus, he went to a solitary place because it's necessary sometimes to really pour ourselves out. And here Jesus, he poured himself out so that the Father can be the one to fill him back up so he has more power and energy to do what he needed to do. 
And so if you've got a Bible, let's turn to Matthew chapter 14. And we're going to see that he gives truly so much to us. That he gave his, his so much to the people that he couldn't go a day without talking to the Father. And we see his reliance on the Father through prayer is what kept him a lot uh, active in, in life and as well as in ministry. So in the story, in Matthew 14, we're going to see that Jesus was willing to pause his agenda in order to take care of those in need. And then he will later resume his plans to go and pray to God because he understands that he too, Jesus himself, he too needed and understood that he had a need that could only be met through prayer. My title today is Resolved and Fueled by Prayer. Resolved and Fueled by Prayer. In Matthew 14, point number one, uh, Jesus immediately sought to be resolved in prayer. Jesus immediately sought to be resolved in prayer. Matthew 14, verse 12. John's disciples came and took his body and buried it. Then they went and told Jesus. When the Jesus heard what had happened, he withdrew by boat privately to a solitary place. Hearing of this, the crowds followed him on foot from the towns. So in this story, John the Baptist had just been beheaded. And Jesus uh, is, is experiencing the, the pain and this deep emotion that was weighing heavily on him. Because he wasn't just, just killed, but he was literally murdered by King Herod the Great, who at the time was, had represented God and represented his people that were within, under the Roman government. And so we got to understand that Jesus came to this earth to be able to help first the, the Jews, then the Gentiles, but he probably felt the weight of the con spiritual condition of Israel alone just because of King Herod. And not to mention this tragic news of hearing John the Baptist being beheaded. And so John the Baptist, who was very special to Jesus, one, because he had prepared the way for his ministry. Um, he was the one who edified Jesus and, and really started uh, doing the hard work for, for Jesus to come on the scene. Uh, but he was also Jesus' cousin himself. He was related, related to John. And so what did he need to do? He needed to immediately sought out a place, a quiet place, to be alone. And likely, it was because he wanted to pray. He wanted to reflect. He wanted to seek the comfort of God. And we, we know it's likely because in Luke 5, 16, we don't have to turn there, but Jesus often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. And so God, or Jesus just wanted to spend his alone time with God. And I can understand that need to be able to pull away sometimes. To spend time with God when I feel heaviness in my heart. And God has designed myself to have different warning, warning systems in place in my life. So whenever I feel overwhelmed, whenever I feel tempted to sin, Whenever I feel defensive uh, by, by certain people in my life, whenever I feel uh, sensitive to what people have said the way that they said it, uh, whenever I'm struggling with pride, all of these are warning signs in order for me to tell myself I need to pray. And so they're just like the, the dashboards on our cars, right? Some of us have, have those check engine lights that just, just never go off, right? Uh, for, for two weeks, it was like low tire air, Longer, longer than that. <laughs> uh, finally took care of that last night. But, but it's, those, those warning signs are telling us it's time to check in. It's time for a checkup yeah. and a tune-up for my relationship with God. Amen. And so uh, for myself, I can feel helpless sometimes uh, when I think about my parents. And I think about uh, the distance they, they might live uh, for a sold-out church. I, I think about the fact that, that they haven't really studied the Bible. And it hurts my heart knowing that they aren't disciples. And just recently, within the past, I don't know, five years, uh, my, my mom has moved a couple different times. And each time she moved, she had, uh, she had a wildfire at her front door multiple different times. 
And when I say multiple, like out your door, like just a few miles away, like spreading uh, quickly. And I couldn't help but go to God in prayer and asking for God to put a, a hedge in to protect her. And, and God, God delivered every single time. Uh, and as well, not just in California with all the fires, is when she moved to Oregon, the same thing happens. And I'm super grateful for God for that. But it, the same goes to my dad. You know, he, my dad's over there in Florida where it's the hurricane capital. And uh, I just called him the other day and he's like, Hurricane Central. Yeah. And uh, he jokes about it, but um, it really does uh, put a lot of anxiety on my sister. And I just tell her, like, you know, we just need to pray. We need to pray to God. And um, these certain burdens are what, what I believe God puts into our lives so that way we go to him. And so in the next verses in Matthew 14, we see, we don't have to read this, but in, in verse 13 through uh, 21, we see that Jesus feeds the 5,000. Um, and he feeds the 5,000 uh, with the help of the other disciples. And that's quite a task. You know, it, it's, it's a task to, to feed the entire church, right? Uh, let alone 5,000 people. But scholars believe there were, there were actually 10,000 because this is only counting the men. Uh, 10,000, if not more, for the children as well. And we see that even in Jesus' time of mourning, the large crowds that had followed him from the towns were seeking him to be able to, for, to hear his teachings, to, to experience his healings. And despite Jesus' grief that he was going through, he was really willing to show compassion for the people amongst his sorrow. And so, amazingly, he was willing to set aside his own time uh, in order to go to God to be able to help these people, to help the multitude. And this aspect of Jesus is what really makes me like, think, like, do I really have this level of love? You know, do I, can I have this level of heart that Jesus has? And I believe that in order to set aside my fears, in order to take the care of the people around me, um, I have to grow in my prayer walk with God to get that strength. And what an amazing God we serve for Jesus to be able to show us this example and call, call us higher. Point number two, Jesus was fueled by prayer. Jesus was fueled by prayer. And uh, right after the feeding, we're going to pick up in verse 12, uh, 22. Matthew 14, verse 22. Immediately, Jesus made, made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of them to the other side while he dismissed the crowd so yeah at verse 23 after he had dismissed them he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray when evening came he was there alone so we see here that after the feeding he finally had time to be able to pray to god and so when he was giving so much pouring himself out he had a jealousy of of, of spending time with his father in the midst of it you know he did not he could not neglect his prayer life how much more my my prideful sack of bones when i think that i can skip out on prayer when jesus himself was was resolute in making sure he had his prayer time with god so so in theory i think you know he he could have had to he could have been dependent on his good works like he did so many things that not all the books in the world could have filled them according to the end of the book of John. But it shows that he was rather dependent not on his works, but on his words spoken to the Father. And so Jesus decided to be persistent in prayer. He knew that he needed to talk to God in order to excavate the emotional pain and the hardship that he was going through and that he was absorbing because of his compassion he had with everyone that came to him. And so that it is once said that prayer is the most valuable in the soul's hardest struggles with temptation. And so Jesus, he didn't just want to pray. He knew that he had to pray. And it brought him much, the much needed rest that fueled his means to go on and help many, many more. And so uh, I myself have been slipping a little bit in prayer. Amen. And... Uh, there was this one time where I, I fell asleep while praying. And when I say one time, I mean a couple times. And uh, 
And you know, they say that like, if you pray like on your stomach, like, or like on the ground, like that's like the most reverent way to pray until you fall asleep. That, that, then it's like one of the most irreverent ways to pray. <laughs> uh, you can have long prayers that way though. But, but uh, you know, when I'm, when I'm listening to my wife, every time I, you know, I'm all right there listening, right? Listening to her right, right on the bed. And uh, so the other night, uh, there I was, uh, knees on the floor, um, you know, forehead uh, on the cushion. And uh, she's, I'm praying, she's praying. And uh, I just, she hears a. <laughs> and uh, really quickly, she goes, in Jesus' name, I pray. Babe! <laughs> Did you just fall asleep? I'm good, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> Amen. Jesus calls me to do better. Amen. But, but there's some incredible benefits of, of prayer. And there's also some incredible benefits of sleep. Right? So sleep, it, it, it resets our, our minds and also our bodies. And sometimes in our sleep, it passes some kidney stones. Amen. But, 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 but prayer, it brings rest in an equally way, if not more powerful because, because prayer, it's going to bring us our soul rests. It's going to bring our mind rest and as well as our body rest. Because when we're able to cast out our anxieties to God, 1 Peter 5, we can feel better in our own skin. Let's turn our Bibles to Mark chapter 1. Mark chapter 1. My dad said the same thing, the most painful thing in his passing the kidney stone. Mark chapter 1. Mark chapter 1. So we're going to see here that at the top of verse 35, it says Jesus prays in a solitary place. And we read verse 35. Very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. And so, you know, he was willing to wake up early. And the thing about when it's early is there's not that much people awake at the time. And you can go to those spots that typically have a lot of people. So you're more likely to have more of a solitary place. And when, when I'm able to get up and pray to God early, I'm able to spend more of my day with the people uh, that, that I love all around me. And, you know, Jesus, it, it doesn't say early. It actually says very early. Very early. Man, I'll tell you, it's, it, the thing about, like, waking up very early, there's something special about it, right? Uh, like the air is a lot cooler, yeah. like it's kind of crisp, more crisp, yeah. Yeah. and especially in Hawaii, right? So, fact, Jesus would have loved to uh, pray over here. And you know, I can wake up early, but when it comes to waking up very early, uh, let's just say that's a goal of mine to do that. Amen. <laughs> and so, especially since uh, for Jesus and his example, if you just kind of look before this, he just got finished healing a lot of people, yeah. and. This was like, actually, he didn't start the healing until the sun went down. And so it wasn't just many people. It was the, the entire town came to be able to go to Jesus. So we can understand that most of us would probably sleep in the next day. I know I would probably sleep in the next day. But Jesus chose to wake up probably at 4 or 5 a.m. nonetheless in order to pray. And so prayer is the key for my heart to be like this, to be able to work hard out of the love for people. And so I love to see the reflection of what prayer looks like and waking up early in, inside of the fellowship. Uh, someone that uh, I want to lift up that isn't here, I know it is our brother Alex. You know, uh, he's just always in the chat like, hey guys, uh, anybody want to pray to get, you know, um, on campus or with the water? And, uh, you know, he's, he's one of the first guys uh, at Starbucks sometimes, like, studying the Bible with uh, a bunch of other people over there, and uh, he's such an early bird, um, as well as uh, the other Alex over there, Soriano, and because uh, sometimes he wakes up really early just to drive to Kona uh, and work over there, and then he works early over there, so um, he's willing to be able to uh, make himself uncomfortable in order to be able to provide for his own family, and I know that there's a lot of more unsung heroes here that wake up early as well. And uh, I know that's like a superpower to many of us, right? 
But I mean, just living in HPP, if you want to, if you work in town, you got to wake up very early to be able to beat the traffic right there. And uh, and so in the story, yeah, be, waking up early is cool, but like also getting outside of the house to pray is is really cool. That what Jesus shows, shows here. And so I have to battle to my selfishness, my tendencies that I'm selfish with my time, and I'm also selfish with my money. I could be tight with money almost to a fault. And so I can think that, you know, going uh, in my car, driving somewhere, you know, it's, it's like a waste of time, it's like a waste of gas. That's just, these, are just, these are just things that I feel and that I, that I think sometimes. Um, and so unfortunately, it equates to me being indecisive and being inactive in prayer. And sometimes, you know, we settle for, for the room, right? Uh, nothing wrong with the room, but but sometimes you know there there there's there's present challenges like distractions. Um, it's hard to pray loudly, right? You got to be quiet sometimes, you know, when other people are praying or sleeping or praying. But it, it resulted to a poor prayer life in my life and also a certain laziness. And and so in order for me to really get out of myself, I learned I got to get out of the house. And my most common prayer spot is my car, you know, driving and praying, right? Uh, but my favorite prayer spot is near a body of water. Uh, I just love that, that Hawaii, like we're just surrounded by it, you know? And we're so lucky, we're so blessed to be able to be here. Uh, to, be able to, to be able to look at the green, to, to look at the, the blue skies, to look at the blue, the blue water. Um, last year I had to settle for looking at like tan and orange and stuff, right? Uh, instead of like praying by a stream, I was praying on the street. But, um, but here, guys, I'm so blessed to be able to be able to pray here with all of you guys um, in nature. And uh, just, just yesterday, uh, at the Singles Devo in Waimea, where my singles at? It was really cool to be able to sit on the bleachers um, and just literally overlook like miles and miles of, of green grass everywhere you looked. And just ahead beyond that was the most majestic mountain in the world, Mauna Kea. And at the top of Mauna Kea, you can, you can see the telescopes. And those telescopes, multi-millions of dollars to build those telescopes in order to view into the second heavens that Paul talks about, um, outer space. Yet we have all been empowered to be able to have an incredible prayer life in order to reach the third heavens where God is enthroned in heaven. And God is just sitting there waiting like, all right, when is my daughter, when is my son going to pray to me next? Waiting for his next chance to hear his words to him. And so Jesus, he, in the same way, he wants us to resolve our difficulties like he did in prayer. He wants us to use the fuel that prayer provides us to be able to live this life to the full and to access the power in order to help others to do the same. But with this family, we can truly um, be resolute. For myself, I know that I can get the fuel that I need and I can understand that I can get resolved in my daily prayer life. To God be all the glory.